Welcome to Life Changing Encounter with Word of God from Cornerstone Baptist Church. May you be blessed as you listen in Jesus' name. Amen. looking at why peace eludes the earth but we want to see briefly the attitude of the believer even in a peaceless world our attitude what should our attitude be even in this life philippians and chapter 2 if you have any encouragement from being united with christ if any comfort from his love if any fellowship is with the spirit if any tenderness compassion and make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love being one in spirit and purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves i read that verse three again do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves verse 4 each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others also to the interests of others first peter chapter 5 verse 6 humble yourself therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time but seven let's ask seven cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you shall we just declare father we thank you for another time like this let your word come to every one of us let your word come to the children to the women to the men to the youths, to the teenagers, to our family members, to the pastors, all of us, let your word come. To this environment, let your word come. The homes, our houses that we have left, let your word prevail there. Let us not just hear on Sundays. Let us hear and apply. And as we apply, then your glory will be revealed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed it somewhere in Kaduna if you have not heard the report you are hearing it now but I'm sure everybody supposed to have heard even those who don't read papers men, women there was a terrible bombing right there at the military installation the church there in Jaji and questions will arise like my friend will ask me he said sir are we not praying enough why is it that when we pray about them this thing are still happening I said we slept up when we should be praying now that it has you know a clear picture is this what is happening to us is like somebody wants to sit for an exam they don't announce exam a week before exam will start they will have announced it at least two weeks but a major exam like waeg jam and the rest you know it in months months you will have known most schools that are organized as you collect the timetable for the year you will know when exams will come now you are not reading you are just loafing all over the place gyrating and enjoying yourself some will say ah we are going for fellowship thank god for fellowship but they will not read they want to hide under the guise of laziness fellowship and reading go together i can tell you one does not kill the other but where are we going a week to the exams you want to read that pass. you want to finish syllabus something that you have neglected for how many months of course, you don't need intercession and prophecy that you will fail. Even if you pass, you cannot defend your pass. That is why it is said now that Nigerian graduates are not properly baked. They call them a half baked, even better than the one that we have now. Why? Not because we do not have lecturers, those who can teach them, but we do not have serious students as it's supposed to be. It has always been, it is still around. You want to study, you want to pass an exam, you are loafing around. 
the same thing happens to us. When we should be praying, we're not praying. Now the problem has said, said, brethren, let us pray. Some will even tell you, don't pray again. Even the one we pray, God has no answer. That's not the voice of God. It's not the voice of God. And so, people who were not expecting death, they went untimely because some people felt they should be bombed. Even if you, you did not understand what we were saying last week, you know that we have crisis that only God can help us handle. Now, for those who have larger congregation that they want to do any program now, you see them buying anti-bomb detonators. Now, what, where is that one in the Bible? Of course, they need to protect the lives of their people, but that tells you that there's something wrong somewhere. Because if you put the amount for that detonator, put it in missions, we will not be telling stories. But because we did not do it, I am not saying what they are doing is wrong. Please don't misquote me. What I'm saying is that when we slept off, we are not paying for it. But it's better to wake up early. Let's wake up so that we will do what God has assigned us to do. What are we looking at? Our attitudes as believers. What are we supposed to be doing in this peaceless earth? That your neighbor does not give you rest. It's a sign that the environment needs attention. That your boss, your colleague, what do we do? We mentioned three things last week. Let me just go over them and I pray that it will not sound academic but we'll look at it as scriptures have said. The first thing that God expects for believers to do, to do their attitude in this peaceless world is that the believer should be humble. We should have sincere humility. We should be humble. Let's look at it critically. Being humble is different from being respectful. That you enter the bus. If I we don't even have the buses around anymore, let's talk about it. I have something else. In those days, you know, you will enter the bus, you will either stand up. The one you have as a DRT, there are not many as it used to be. But where I'm going is that you want to enter a bus, and an elderly person comes there before, even after you. The onus is that you allow the elderly person to go ahead. If you see children who don't give room for elders, we are to correct them. You don't assume. That's being respectful. But humility, ah, to be humble goes beyond that. In fact, it is the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer so as to attain to the image of Jesus Christ. Being humble, when you, the, 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 the foundation of being humble is to accept what God has done for us through Jesus. That's the foundation. We live in an area where I have never seen a day Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Saturday, where people don't, you don't have criers. People crying. Give your life to Jesus. He is coming soon. I have seen men, women, elderly shouting. Some will say, they said last year that he's coming soon. He has not come. Who told you that he will come next year? I beg you. But nobody can stop them. You see them shout. You will see those who are not educated preaching in their mother tongue shouting ever fire you for jesus jesus mbok on it where they jesus they talk on it jesus mbok as they are shouting those who are drinking beer drinking beer those who are mocking and mocking those who are but let me tell you brethren the shouts of these people are timely it will take somebody who is humble to come to jesus especially now so beyond that foundation if you have received jesus as your savior you will not understand what humility is until you take another step. What is that step? The step that whatever belongs to you is no longer yours. In this Bible, all that we read, it said, consider others better than yourself. Negates motivational talks that you are receiving. In motivational talks, carry yourself. It is as you carry yourself that they will carry you. That's not scripture. That is little God syndrome. Carry yourself properly. It is as your position was just says, consider others better than yourself. Can we take example and see what it means? When Abraham was living, when God called him, Bible says he, he took his nephew, Lot. If you consider their ages, Lot was like a small child. But Abraham took him along. When Abraham got to the land, Bible says, and the land there was famine in the land. Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham had to leave. And when he left, he went into Egypt. He got into Egypt. 
where he lied half truth he was that total lie but the scripture says as he was leaving Egypt he added there were some things added to him where are we going chapter 13 it got to a point Bible says the hearts men those who were watching the the animals for Lot they fought with Abraham Abraham's hearts men now when Lot had that Instead of approaching his, his father in the law, that's father in the law. Bible says it was Abraham that took the initiative. He called Lord Abraham, somebody that you trained, though, he called Lord. Said, We do not need to fight. That is humility. We don't need to fight. Genesis chapter 13. Let's go there. I want you to see it yourself. Chapter 13 of Genesis. I read from verse 8. So Abraham said to Lord. Let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your heart's men and mine for we are brothers. Can you hear that? Oh my God. Reading that scripture over and over and learned a lesson that you don't have to usurp authority. We are brothers. How can Abraham be telling the person he raised? Say, look, you my son. He didn't say so. He said, we are brothers. Oh, no wonder the Bible says, the blessings that we receive through Jesus Christ are the one that the Lord has given unto Abraham that we should be called his sons. That's not where I'm going. Look at it. Verse 9. It's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Verse 10. Read for me verse 10. Lord, look up and saw why do you think Lord did not say no sir don't let us part because in his heart he had left him no wonder he couldn't come back again humility when somebody that is below you in size in rank in uh, status is trying to abuse you the way you respond will show that you are humble you have been song, sir. <laughs> is that not a polite insult ah eshe eshe thank you and then you go because he who keeps himself is wise. If you expose your anger, the Bible says that you are a fool. So you keep yourself. How come the man said, let us part? And that was what he wanted. And when they parted, the Bible says in the next chapter that he had lost all those things that he gathered. He took Abraham to pray to receive those things back. That is one. Another example of humility was when David skillfully with his I, with his very sound knowledge of war, the man had, he was not just a singer, they called him a singer, the Bible calls him a prophet, he was a captain of the host, he was a king, he was an anointed of God, he, had, he, can, he can fit into many areas in our lives, if David were to be alive, he will make money, because he can speak as a warrior, you will see him, he will speak as a king, he will compose songs, so you will see him just have David group of ministries because his ministry will be very big if the man could say in psalm 33 he says sing skillfully the man that handled ordinary lie and demons were jumping out of things i'm telling you oh the man will make money but what happened as he planned that uriah another warrior under him should be killed i saw humility in it no wonder god God gives grace to the humble. It's in your Bible, it's in mine. He gives grace to the humble. When they sent for Uriah, his wife had been used. His wife was pregnant. They now sent. This thing did not happen in one month. Though. They now sent for him from war. If what Uriah said should be the heart of everybody. The Bible says Uriah came to the palace. The king said, go home. He said, go home. Why? In his heart. He said, I should go home when Joab and the other soldiers are at war. More importantly, the Ark of the Covenant is at war. I will not go home and eat and have pleasure with my wife. That should be the heart of every leader. It's time to pray. And Madame says, Ewale Lene, you come home today. When it's time to pray. You know what Bible says? You will quote for me now. And God told Abraham, hear your wife. Humility. The scripture says, he kept, he stayed in the palace and he slept among ordinary bloody civilians who had no business fighting here was a mighty man of valor when they were counting the, those who were mighty men his name was the last uriah 
the Hittite. Came into the palace. The king said, And you are still here. They went and told him, He's not, he didn't go home. Oh. He didn't go home as usual. Babu recalls that David now arranged a special banquet so that he will have him drunk. Brethren, I learned something here that when your enemy plans evil for you, God can turn it to good. And he has always been doing that. How come a drunkard did not go home to meet his wife? Because the hand of the Lord was resting upon him. He didn't go. He stayed with the ordinary bloody civilians in the palace who were enjoying themselves. Who did not know there was war outside. The king now said, what do I do? Okay. He gave a letter of his own death to him. Oh, you wonder why God was annoyed. Oh, Lord, you are You are using him. You now want to even, even destroy him. God is no respecter of anybody. All the places where Bathsheba was mentioned in the Bible say, Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. All that belongs to you shall not be lost. That's humility. When the man took the letter, do you know what, brethren? Somebody else will have turned the letter. I want to see what the king is writing. But because he did not suspect the king ah, said, If you are truthful, you will not get anything in Nigeria. You will say that at the gate. We have come to a point where everybody in Nigeria knows that it's only the truth that can help us. It's only the truth that somebody comes on the radio to read for you and begin to read. Eh, we, 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 are, we are preparing something for you. We are taking care of you. Who will take care of you? I was going through punch on the internet, and one of the commentators now wrote is about 12 reasons. He wrote with evidences how the leaders in Lagos have milled Lagos dry. And he mentioned names. How they will tell you that they want to take over a particular land and use it for Lagos. And they will get there. They will convert that land to their own personal property. As you and I are here, hear me clearly. We are not anti-Lagos. But the truth must be told. If you go all over Lagos, all commissioners that have ever served in Lagos since 1999 till date, the official quarters have been converted to their own personally. I asked myself, what happened to those who were commissioners before then? If they had converted it, will it have been disabled so? And you have among them those who come to church who cannot say, this is all. Commissioners will keep coming to Lagos as long as the earth remains. If you are living with one, be careful. The dad your long day. I went to get some things for the church. And as I entered the place, there was no light. It was so hot on a Thursday. And this man of God entered. I was about paying for the thing. And he said, in over language, man of God, tell your congregation Jesus is very clear. It's coming very soon. He said, people don't preach that again. All they preach is, I will, you will be rich in 10 days. Who says you shouldn't be rich? The Lord will bless your hands. What I'm saying, beyond that, we, take, we brought nothing. If you, have, if you don't know anywhere in the Bible, let that one be your point. Read that portion in the Bible first, Timothy chapter 6. We came with nothing and certainly, he said, certainly, we went for a wedding in Ibadan. I already count that event because it's very, very important. And the man of God brought the brother to the front. He's a friend of ours. And he said, say after me. I, he mentioned his name, will love you. The, boy, the, the brother was adding to it will love you absolutely absolutely certainly the man of God said say what you are told sir. because when shark hears him when the woman will misbehave now you say no not absolutely halfly he kept on adding to it certainly absolutely I told the Lord said, God is this big grammar the man did not say it though. but you can be rest assured that God said it that certainly will go with nothing so if you are going with nothing why do you keep yourself acquiring I say it again, brethren, all over the nation. The cry is this. Who will rule in righteousness? We are tired of lies. But I say to you who are in church, do you know what humility is? Because we need to humble ourselves. Number three, on that example. There was a Baba in the Bible. I read the scripture and it became something to me. An old man, when David was being chased by his son, Absalom. Bible says he ran. It didn't work. He ran. Now, if David was to stay and fight Absalom, he would kill him. He would kill Absalom. The Bible says, the man was, when he died, the leaders of, was given testimony to, said, you know your father is a skillful soldier. Even at an old age, 
Oh, it's like a man saying, Do you know that your father is a mighty prayer warrior? Or your father uh, is a lazy man. <laughs> All that the Lord has given you, you will lose nothing. The man went in pain, in, 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 he went in tears. But when he was coming back, Babu mentioned the man by the name Bazila. Oh, see, there are some people you will not meet. They don't, you don't, they are just small. They just met them once in the Bible. Basila, the Gileadite from Rogeli. Brother, what is this baby grammar for? Bible says, when Pedro was going back to take over his property, to take over the reign, 80 year old man, Basila, was there. David said, come with me. It's like somebody who has won an election. He said, come with me. Anything you desire, I will give you. Second Samuel, chapter 19. Humility. No wonder he says, he gives grace to the humble. Second Samuel 19, I read from verse 31. Basilai the Gileadite also came down from Rogelim to cross the Jordan with the king and to send him on his way from there. 32. Now Basilai was a very old man. How old? How old? At 80. You don't need to vibe with a presidency. Let the younger ones do it. So at 80, you put it to become the counselor of your area. The younger ones you have trained, let them do it. Let them do it. That's if you have trained them. Now, Basilai was, very, was a very old man, 80 years of age. He had provided for the king during his stay in Mahanaim. For he was a very wealthy man. He was not just old. How did he come to wealth? Who called that God our time? 33. The king said to Basilai, cross over with me. And stay with me in Jerusalem. And I will provide for you. I will provide a rich man. I will provide for you. I will provide for you. Oh my God. 34. But Basilai answered the king. How many more years will I live? That I should go up to Jerusalem with the king. I am now 80 years. The man knew his age. Can I tell the difference between what is good and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats and drinks? Can I still hear the voices of men and women, singers? Why should your servant be added, be an added burden? Hail to my Lord the King. Verse 36, your servant will cross over the Jordan with the king for a short distance. But why should the king reward me in this way? Let your servant return that I may die in my own town near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant. Oh my God. He handed over somebody. That's humility. How come you say something, nobody acknowledges you and you're angry? I don't know how far it's true, but I read in papers that some leaders are saying, we will, we will give you another president. Question, what is wrong with this one? What is wrong with the other one? Agba okinwa loja, kori omo tutu wo, owe gidi, agodo panisi. Tori a wang agba to wansi, bukbo on omo lo ti she, ori omo omo, they want to write the wrong that they created themselves. Humility. Humility will make a man accept his mistake and be ready for correction. Humility will make a man run for what God desires, not what man desires. Humility will make a man consider another person. What I want to do, will it affect you for evil? Why should I do what will affect you for evil? That's humility. Humility will make a child to think about the parents' tears. A child will go to school, not because he wants to, but because he is humble. I don't want to go to school and be loafing around. I want my parents to know and enjoy what I'm going to school for. Because parents don't send you to school for themselves, but for yourself. They are, don't tell your parents, I'm not going to school today. Oh, oh, for what I go and I say, when we were in Baptist Academy in the late 70s, 78, 79, we had this boy. Because in Baptist Academy, we have children of well-to-do Nigerians. All of them were in our class. You know, they were in the same in this school. This child will come to school in the morning. The father will drop in with his car. He will, as soon as he gets, he, he, no, he got down from the car, you will see him going towards Banikoro to smoke his go. But the father, he was in school. The time now came when we were to write exams. He couldn't write anything. He was boasting, telling others. He will come to the class, he said, you are reading books. I will count money. Continue to read books. He was repatriated from, from America to Nigeria. 
because they discovered that he forged his certificates. This 46 year old man in JS1, he will be the class captain. Nobody will contest it. You don't need any vote because when you see his chest alone, who will contest the class captain with him? 46 year old man in JS1. He said, Well, he didn't have pleasure of reading. That's why, brethren, nobody will make that excuse. All that the Lord has given you shall multiply. Humble yourself. Believers who humble themselves know that it's the work of the Holy Spirit in them. As I'm standing here, the work is still going on. And it's going on in you. If we allow him, the work goes on. Humility is a continuous work. Don't forget that. If you are humble, when you are coming to the church and the usher say, please come to the front, you will follow them because you know you are humble. Not like you, you will stop. The usher will still be going to the front. The person has stopped. Why? Because at that moment, he has the authority. She has the authority. Humility will make a believer hear announcement and say, what are they saying? I don't understand. Please explain it more. And when it's explained, you will obey what you have heard. Why? Because when God gives instructions, it's for everybody. These men were humble. And we need humility now. I take the second one and I will leave you. All that the Lord has given you, the Lord will make them abound. You didn't hear me, he will make them abound. The second thing that we need to do in our own time in this business world is that we should fear God. Oh, the fear of the Lord. This bar and man, my brothers, my children, to fear God is not to tremble. It's not to be shaking. It's not to come to church and look sanctimonious. You see, right at home, you have been very, very annoyed. As soon as you are, you got to Tiwalade, you now became... No, that's not that's not fear of God. What is fear of God? Hate evil. Let me show you. It's in your Bible. Proverbs 14 and verse 2. Be honest and you show that you have reverence for the Lord. Be dishonest and you show that you do not. If you are dishonest, you don't have reverence for the Lord. If you are dishonest, even if you do thanksgiving, if you are dishonest, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Do you know we must not make excuses for sin? At the same time, we must not make excuses for accusation. There are two different things. Whatever you are about to do, think about it. What I am about to do, who will take the glory? Is it me or God? Be careful before you act. Be careful. Whatever action we are about to take, think about it. Think about it. In 1 Timothy and chapter 1, Paul called himself four things and he called God four things. And I will round up with that, I believe. Before we look at that, look at what James said. James told us that in life, life is like a sandwich. On top, bread, Abi. Between, what is there? It could be, it could be egg, it could be cabbage. Is it garbage or cabbage? Which one do they eat? They don't eat garbage, they eat cabbage. Uh -huh. Why are they so similar? Cabbage and garbage. You have bread, you have the, whatever you want to eat in between, you have bread. It was taken, everything you see in life has their root in the Bible. Is anyone troubled? Let him pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is anyone sick? Let him call on the elders and they will anoint him. And the prayer will be answered. It will be raised up and the prayer... He mentioned trouble, happy, and sickness. Those are the three things that will be at. It's called sandwich. Is anyone trouble? He did not say let him complain. Let him do what? Let him pray. Is anyone happy? He did not say open your fridge. Let him sing songs. Not Fuji. Not Aymasi uh, Kolonda Mweda. Not the not the one you not mama and shata sing songs of praise. Is anyone sick? Let him call. If you look at the three, there's always a call. There's a call. There's a call. That is why I know that what God has given you shall not diminish. You didn't hear me, shall not diminish. In your presence, your children will be mighty in Nigeria and beyond. In your presence, you will live to see the good of the Lord in Nigeria. Paul calls himself three things. What are those things? He said, you used to know 
he was writing to his son Timothy. He said he was a blasphemer, a persecutor, a violent man. He said, this is a faithful saying that is worthy of all acceptation. He said, do you know that God has come to save the sinners of whom he was the best? The best. Now, see what he called himself. He said he was a blasphemer. He was a persecutor. He was a violent man. He was the worst sinner. How can a man call him, call himself those four and see be qualified for grace? But at the latter part of that scripture, when he was now admonishing and praising God, he said, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invincible, the only wise God. If you need to know that those four, he was only recounting what God did to nullify what he was because he was humble. As a blasphemer, God appeared as the only wise God. Is the, it will take the wisdom of God to silence a blasphemer. Those who just say words anyhow. I'll give you an example. A man boasted in my presence. He said we were praying and fasting so that the church where we came from, the auditorium will be pulled down and another will be built. And I, by the grace of God, we now I spared those who will be praying. We will come for vigil. Because we saw so many things that were wrong with the building. The building was weak. While we were praying, a man said, Your prayers will not be answered. Look, this church will not come down. Because my father, my forefather built it. And you know, you don't reply an elder. Unless you want to pray. So we left the place. We were, we were, going to, we were praying again. He said, Lord, because you said, that I will build my church. We know it's not physical, but this one is physical. You will build this place for us. A woman came and said, Any small thing, God, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus cannot help in this matter. We are the one in charge here. <laughs> A man busted in Nigeria before I go to that one. These two men, these two people, one is still alive, the other is there. The one is there. The, a new church building is standing there. Why? Whatsoever the Lord has determined about you cannot be changed. Somebody said, but it can be delayed. Where is that in your Bible? Oh, when you quote, quote correctly. If God, God has said about me cannot be destroyed, why is he being delayed? Why, why, why is my life being delayed? You have not read the Bible. Look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 8. Chapter 18. The last verse he said, shall not the judge of the earth answer them speedily? Why are you reading one part and you leave the other part? A man boasted over the nation and said, unless he becomes the president, not one person can stop it. Even God! Even God! Oh my God! That's blasphemy. A presidential candidate in, in Brazil. He was very popular. Everybody knew him. He went on the air and said, nothing can stop my election. Not even God. Of course, the election went on. He was elected, but he was not sworn in. The day before he would be sworn in, he became herald. No music group has ever had success like the Beatles. Mentioning the Beatles now, people always see it as, as an insect. Many of us don't know them. Four of them, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and the other two people. They were coming from an outing, very successful. They have sung people when money was flowing. They asked one of them, Ah, you people are so popular on the airport tarmac. He said, We are even more popular than Jesus Christ. Even Jesus is not as popular as we. Go and check out all the four. Only John, only uh, McCartney is alive. The others are dead and they died the mystery. I am using what you know now to now explain what Paul was saying by blasphemy. You are praying over a thing. You have been praying over the years. And then you hear yourself saying, Is God alive? That's the voice of blasphemy. Close it immediately. Don't allow it to come through your mouth. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hey, oh boy, go sit down. See your brother. When I'm going to go to the church, you don't be 10 houses. You did there, they languish in Lagos. That's the voice of God. Why? Because it's your shepherd. He will, everything that concerns you shall be settled. People hear the voice of the devil and they speak it out. They say it out. Because they have heard from uh, um, um, 
the earthly psychology that you, whatever is you are, say it out, or say it out. Or, it was a blasphemy. But the wisdom of no, 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 the foolishness of God that is wiser than the wisest man answered it. That's why we said he's the only wise God. He called himself a persecutor. How did God answer him? You know, he said, You are invincible. So, what is invincible to fight what is invincible? What does that mean? Persecution is a spirit. It's a spirit. In any area you are being persecuted, to command silence. When a man is being persecuted, he may not even know where he's coming from. Persecution is a terrible thing. No. I'll give you an example. I don't know whether you read it, but I read it and I saw the picture. These two people that were cutting themselves, and the chap has his appearance outside Lagos, were told in punch that the man in Lagos lured the girl from where he was, she was, to Lagos, so that she will come and see her parents. Before you know it, the man poured acid. 2012. When one thinks that people should have developed, the man emptied a nylon of acid on that beautiful girl. Ah! When they showed the picture of the girl, every part of her had been melted by question. How did he get the acid? I can tell you without even looking at it. They don't sell acid anyhow. I can tell you that. You don't pour on person. No, I never pour. But I don't buy. When we were having a refuse heap in our house, in our compound, I asked somebody, what do we do? Because the refuse we're getting, he said, why not buy an acid and pour? It will, it will, it will decay the, the refuse. Because it was an abandoned well. I went to my friend, Nayege, all over this place. I get friend, no. If I want campaign, I don't need your campaign. Anywhere where I'm, I don't get friend. Here, on my left here, there are about four. Across the express, they will come and say, Ah, daddy, they don't come to this church. Daddy, yes, she are no. I want money to do well. I want more money. I want more money. Eh? Where am I going? So I went to my friend, I said, I want to buy us. He said, I don't go sell. I said, no. Ah, he said, excuse me, I won't sell low. No. Because I don't want police to come and catch me. He said, oh, you know me now. Ah, I know you. I don't go sell low. No. I said, don't worry. At least just say something for me. He said, will you assure me that it will be used well? I said, how will I assure him that? <laughs> Before you could sell four liters of conch acid for us. He sold it. I paid. He didn't collect money once. He said, I'm not SP, sir. Now you, it's because of you, I gave him the money, took the cake. He said, SP, sir, hey, I bet you sound well, no. <laughs> I will pour the acid in the well. And it had effect on the refuse. But where I'm going is this. I don't know who sold it to that child. But it will take a persecuting spirit to destroy somebody else. Hear that and hold on. It will take a persecuting spirit. If you are hearing, no greed. Killer. Inga. You are being persecuted. That's why it will tell the Galatian church in chapter 1. He said, he persecuted the church in order to destroy it. So it will take the invisible power to attack the invisible spirit. You will not fall into the hands of men. It will take an invisible God to close down the mouth of a persecutor. As the year runs to an end, many are afraid. Let me leave it there. What are they afraid of? Year done the end though. I'm not sure whether I will see next year. That's not God speaking to you. The difference between this year and next year is in the day and the night. So in any area that you are hearing persecuting spirit in you, there is silence. There is silence. They are silent though. Why am I emphasizing this? You will now begin to hear catalogs of all manner of words. Ah, it's because this happened, that's why this happened. This happened, that's why this happened. Some will even blame their husband. This year, now you know, make me make progress. Next year, God will remove all those who are obstacles. He called him. <laughs> you hear why? Husband talking about that. Oh, oh, no. Don't you know that a day in the house of the Lord is than a thousand elsewhere. One thing have I desired, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is not number two, Tiwalade Street. The house of the Lord is this. Your body has become his house. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. All the days I speak concerning you, your hope shall see the light of day. 
We believe you've been blessed by the powerful word of God. For more information, visit us at www.cspc-ng.org or contact the following numbers 01-741-1671-080-6355-3603 We mean blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Just believe the Close, but it will be